Okay, welcome back guys. Today I'm going to go over kind of a, not necessarily a full unboxing, but a review of the Pro-M EFI engine management system. If you're in the market for an ECU, say you're doing a mass air conversion or a 4 to 8 conversion, uh, switching back from car, whatever, and you need a new computer or a new harness, you definitely want to have the Pro-M EFI system probably on your candidate list. Uh, you Basically, the best way to say this, you get what you pay for. So this system actually was derived, according to Chris Richards, the owner of Pro-Am. This system originated from, or is basically spawned out of the FR500 program. So this is actually Ford engineered program. The computer for this was actually uh, developed by Ford Motor Company engineers. You can actually see the Fomoco logo on here. The ECU itself, this thing is... Quite impressive, kind of industrial grade quality. You can look on here, you can see some of the hermetic sealing in here. So this thing is really well built. Uh, not only the quality, but it's supposed to be shockproof and waterproof, kind of, I guess, an homage to the, the lineage of, you know, being race inspired. They're going to make it more foolproof than your standard vehicle. This thing is controlled. You'll obviously uh, give you full control of tuning it. You'll need your own laptop. The system itself allows you to control it with Windows or Mac. The system uses two Innovate widebands for the left and right or passenger and driver side banks for your tuning. So this piece, um, I'm not going to run into this, but from research, you will need, if you are using a Mac, you're going to need an emulator. But this has nothing to do with Pro-Am. This happens to do with Innovate. Uh, some of the other tidbits I want to go over before, I'm going to kind of walk you through the harness itself. There are some nice sensors and features on this. Um, one of the things that you got to watch for is Pro-M sells a OEM, OEM quality shutter wheel that is more accurate. Some of the aftermarket distributors, these can throw off your timing, you know, fraction of a degree. So uh, when you're doing applications like we are, anything with high boost, uh, turbo kind of applications, it's a devil's in the detail. Not a lot of money. I think it's like 60, 70 bucks for this. Uh, other thing on that I have for the sensor, and again, I'll go over this, is I have, I'm using the, uh, the Pro-Am fuel, fuel pressure sensor. And what this does is instead of just taking the pressure from, say, the fuel rail to atmosphere, this takes, uh, references it to vacuum, so essentially intake to the fuel rail pressure. So instead of just going to atmosphere, you're actually measuring the differential pressure across the injector. So it can potentially protect you from going lean. Uh, if you start getting pulses or anything like that inside the fuel rail. So definitely, uh, and this thing's like, just like the ECU, this thing's really beefy, really well built quality. I'm using the Pro-M mass airflow meter. Mine's a Pro-M 92 for the for my application. Uh, I am doing coil on plug. This is actually one of the reasons why I really wanted to do this system. Cleans up my wiring. I get rid of the coil off of my strut tower. Um, plus it looks cool in the billet piece that goes on top of the distributor so not only does it look nice but it cleans up a lot of the wires that is also another major feature of this system it really does enhance the wiring because it gets some of the rid of some of the relays and things like that off the strut tower so now i'm just going to kind of walk through the walk through the harness itself so the first thing is the connectors to the harness uh, so if you're considering where this you know if you're considering a system this is actually going to mount under the passenger seat. You pretty much could mount it anywhere. If you, so if you've got a race car, you don't need to have it under the seat if there's no seat. One of the nice features this system does give us is an OBD2 port. So that's already, this is built in. So I'll point out uh, things that are extra, uh, but these, you know, everything I'm talking about right now is built in. Uh, I'm not quite sure what this filter does. It's some kind of filter just plugs right in. And this is where we start getting to, you know, the devil's in the details here. Uh, there's a lot of little inputs, so let me just point something out here. So here is the firewall grommet, and everything from this portion to the harness back to the connector for the computer, this is everything inside the car. So these little inputs are things for your launch control, your traction control. Yes, this does provide traction control. Uh, it gives a couple 12-volt. Uh, inputs, your digital inputs for whatever you want to use them for. Uh, meth control, boost control, uh, line lock. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. It has a fan cool down feature. Um, methanol control, uh, two step. 
you know, you know, and of course your rev limiter is built in the computer. So all this goes inside. It really simplifies the wiring. If you don't use them, they just stay. So all of this stuff, these little wiring is well labeled on here. Uh, these things all stay. They basically go up into the kick panel. So one of the things I really liked about the system is, for some reason, if you're doing an OEM style system, this thing's great because it's pretty plug and play. Uh, if you're doing a stock style, now if you're getting more creative, like many of the people are, uh, there may be some wiring involved. But this connects to all your stock gauges, all your stock connectors, and you can see the quality of these connectors. They're well built. They, you know, I think that's probably the biggest thing when I when I bought this and when it came in the box. I was really impressed with the way this thing was built. And just let me be clear, I am not sponsored in this video. Um, I've bought all of this on my own money. You know, if Chris, if Chris happens to watch this and wants to send me a free boost boost control sensor, have at it. Uh, but with that said, like I said, I don't don't want anybody to think that this is a, some kind of paid deal. So uh, on your firewall, I'm sorry, on your strut towers, you know, you have relays. Some of your some depending on the year, you have relays for your fuel pump. All of those relays basically come back into your kick panel. So if you're somebody like me that has shaved the fenders and you just want to clean up your wiring, this basically does it kind of automatically for you. All nicely labeled. I'll just show you that. Clearly labeled, you know, very high quality connectors. The wires are well done. There's no Mickey Mouse here. And then once we get outside uh, into the firewall, I'm going to point out, so there's a lot of your standard connectors here. But I'm going to go over some of the ones that, you know, the things that people that probably want to spend this kind of money are going to be interested. So this does have a flex fuel connector. I'm not going to be using this because I'm not going to be using E85, even though I'm using Boost. It's just a pain for me to get it. And I don't really need it. Uh, but if I need to, I could always add this sensor in the future. Uh, this is a very popular option. I'm probably the oddball by not using this, uh, but very easy to add this later. Then the other thing is fuel pressure. And I mentioned this is just that sensor I talked about earlier. This is not for your fuel pressure gauge. This is a sensor that's an input to the computer looking at the pressure across your injectors. Then your, of course, your boost control. So I will be using boost. So uh, obviously you control boost by RPM, uh, can control max, max boost, uh, any of the kind of features you would typically think about that. And then this has your, you know, so you, and I'm not going to go over all the stock connectors because that's not only is it boring, uh, those are kind of academic. So when you pull out your old harness, basically uh, your OEM connectors that are still there are just going you know, to plug in like your AC. This does not connect to the EGR. So if that's important or you need that, you'll have to figure out a solution for that. Uh, this is for nitrous control and methanol control. That basically goes to your nitrous or meth system. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to be using nitrous. So... Uh, I'll probably just neatly tuck this back underneath and I'll just use this for later. And then with the meth control, the sensors themselves come right. And again, these are built right into the harness. And a nice little feature that this thing has is it actually has traction control. And what it does is it looks at the rotational speed of your drive shaft versus the speed of the car and compares that signal. So if you have a vastly wild number and it looks like the thing's spinning, it'll start pulling torque and pulling pulling power out of it so you're not just wiping through and just blowing the wheels off your tires. So as I mentioned, I am doing coil unplug. This is one of the nice features. Uh, you can actually use a crank trigger uh, that the Pro-M sells. I'm not using that. Uh, but uh, this is, it uses LS style coils. Uh, it doesn't come with the plug wires, obviously, because everybody's application is different. So that's something you have to source on your own. And then the harness is kind of most, quite a bit of the rest of the harness is stock style stuff. So your idle air controller, you know, your, your gauges, you say your oil pressure, stock oil pressure gauge, water temperature gauge, all of those, all of those, all your dash. Well, now I'm going to be doing the Dakota digital. So I'll be going a slightly different route with a complete how to, I'm going to be doing step by step through this. So you guys can see my trials and tribulations. Again, I'm going to do it yourself for. So, you know, it is what it is. If I screw something up, you're going to see it. And if I do a good job, I'll pat myself on the back. So another feature oh, that I forgot, and it's actually important, is 
the fan control, I mentioned about the fan cooldown, but what I didn't mention is this is actually already pre-wired with a relay to control your fans. Now it is limited. There's a fuse to 30 amps, but the relay that actually feeds that goes to 70 amps. So in my case, I'll be using this as a control wire. And I'll be using a couple of relays to the fans itself. You know, it's been kind of sorting out the best way to do that. Uh, so anyways, that's a nice little feature to have that's already wired in. So again, it can simplify your wiring for you. So you don't necessarily need a whole separate fan controller uh, to control your fans. I'm going to be using a contour fan setup, dual fan setup. So we talked about simplifying the wire, the, the wiring. As you know on here, the, the uh, map sensor that goes on the firewall actually goes away in the system. They don't use it. There is a connector to use it if you got really high boost applications and you do want to use it. It's a GM style um three bar sensor i don't need it i don't think i'm going to need it and again it's one more thing that comes off the firewall cleans up the wiring another nice feature is the beloved tfi what this system does it actually uses this as a signal as a signal wire but it actually doesn't use the tfi itself so even if the tfi is bad it still will work as long as the signal's there you don't have any bad connections but you don't have to worry about you know, being on the side of the road because your TFI fails, especially in a high heat, any boosted car, turbo car, it's got a lot of heat under the hood. Those things like to fail. So this is just another major benefit of this system. So I talked about the quality of the connectors. You know, if you've ever bought like an Aeromotive type system or Ron Francis wiring harness, kind of the real high quality stuff, this has that same feel, same OEM style connectors. So it's not the cheapy little brittle stuff. I mean, the stuff, I mean, it you know, just kind of, you, you see the quality speaks for itself. One thing this doesn't do, it doesn't use the old spout connector. It uses this connector so it basically can't fall away. Or you can't lose it or magically drop it in the middle of the engine bay, never to be seen again. You know, and just to finish out, you know, about the harness itself, the, you know, the quality of the wiring, really well done, heat shrinked. You know, the connectors, they're nice and thick, nice and beefy. So some of the things you're going to need when you're sourcing this out and you're trying to make that decision what system you're going to use, only if you're going to really get more modified, but if you're just planning on using a stock replacement, you don't really have to do a whole lot of wiring, pretty much probably your fan if you're using electric fans. Then really the only thing you need is you are going to need uh, USB to RS-232 or USB to serial, let's call it different things. Uh, you're going to need this to go from your laptop to program and set up your Innovate widebands. Obviously, for any gauges, anything like that, so I'm just showing you things that you're probably going to have to buy. These are some 5-amp fuses. So some of the things like the traction control, boost control, some of that stuff, you, you want to put these through fuses. Uh, obviously, you need a couple relays. Uh, some breakers to the fans. I'm going to need a breaker for the methanol control, uh, you know, so switches, things like that. And obviously some 16, 8 gauge, some different size wires. But not a whole lot outside the system do you really need. It's really not that, in, it shouldn't, if you're intimidated by this, you really shouldn't be. I am, like I said, I'm going to walk you through this. So hopefully that will help guide it. If you have any questions as we're going through, feel free to ask, I'm sure. I hope I haven't left anything out. I just want to get this out there because when I went through this decision process, I actually bought a Terminator X and sent it back after some careful decision making. And it's simply because I wanted OEM quality. If for some reason, if any time in the future I ever wanted to switch this back or I ever sold the car and somebody ever wants to go back to the original, and I have the original harness in the computer, but you could pretty much swap this right back. There would be really no need for me ever to go back to the stock harness. So some of the other features for you 87, 88 guys, you guys, you guys didn't come with a vehicle that had a check engine light, so they have a kit, especially now that you're going mass air. So you're going to get, basically you have the ability to add a check engine light, which is, you know, gives you a little bit of warning, hey, go check your codes or something going on, uh, rather than just being blind to it or relying on an external gauge or something like that. Uh, I think that about covers it. I'm sure there's probably something I miss in here. But at least this is some trigger some things in your brain when you're considering this. You know, uh, I'm not a I'm not an expert tuner. But one of the things I really like about this system 
is you plug in some relatively basic inputs, the transfer function that you get. Now, Chris did me a favor because I had sent my mass air back, so he actually programmed mine in for me already, so I didn't have to type in the transfer function. Save me, you know, a couple hundred data points to enter. Uh, and, but beside that, there's relatively pretty much, you know, very detailed instruction. Actually, the instructions are on a PDF on your computer, and I actually took mine to Staples, I just took a file and had them all printed and bounded because I, you know, I like the paper in my hand if I need to take any notes. Uh, maybe something else, you know, give you guys an idea to try. I hope this helps you out. At least it gives you things to consider or compare to other systems. This is not a, uh, a bash or meant to be a comparison. I just think this system is the right choice for me. Uh, the quality speaks for itself. Um, when you look at the harness, I don't think you can really, there's really much you could pick apart. Uh, really impressed with the way the computer looks, uh, you know, and it's going to go into the seat, so I don't have to worry about it getting bashed or getting wet or something like that happen. You know, for some reason I get something in my floorboard or something. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. I hope this helps, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.